Hello people of the internet, welcome to episode 3 of From the Shelf, the Paint to Life series where we take a look at a previous episode that you might have missed the first time around and throw a couple little anecdotes in there for those who might have seen it before. Tonight I'm going to be looking at and revisiting the Modrons. This was in episode 15 of Paint to Life and uh, it was the first time I'd kind of stepped back after doing dragons and gods and all kinds of really intense things to these small tiny little robotic cybernetic creatures from the plane of Mechanus, the plane of law. Um, it was also a fun story in that it ended with uh, a chaos beast that was more than it seemed, or less than it seemed, I suppose. I also incorporated some actual metal shavings in the base of this model uh, from my friend's machine shop, as well as little cogs, painted them to look metallic. I was quite happy with the way the base turned out, so I hope you like it. Let's take another look at the Modrons from the shelf. we're going to be taking it down a few inches and we are going to be painting some Modrons from the plane of Mechanus. Imagine a plane of absolute law and order. A plane devoid of the concepts of karma, emotion, ethics, and morality, as these are all constructs of organic beings to help categorize and process the world around them. It sounds very sterile, right? Almost mechanical? Well, welcome to Mechanus, the clockwork of the universe, with a tangible presence in every other plane in existence. This is a plane consisting of massive cog-like structures that are continent-sized and always moving and operating under absolute certainty. If you drop something on the ground in Mechanus, as it falls, they will bounce and arrange itself in any kind of semblance of order that it might have had. Go ahead and roll some dice. Every roll will sequence one, followed by two, followed by three. You pour water from a decanter. It will come out in the exact specified amount without any extra spillage or drips or randomness to it. Even nature takes on this quality here as rain falls from the sky with each drop symmetrically spaced out from one another. Talk about social distancing. Hell, if you look at sand, from a beach on Mechanus under a microscope, you'd see that it's comprised of tiny little cogs all spinning in unison. Nothing operates in a manner other than what it's programmed for in Mechanus. And at the center of that order is the androgynous Primus, immune to all magic, ruler of all Mechanus, and the creators of the maintainers of this order, the Modrons. Modrons look like a weird blend of organic and geometrical shapes, with both organic and mechanical parts blended together like a cyborg. They're absolute physical manifestations of law, without regard to good or evil. They follow a strict hierarchy, with each rank reporting to the rank directly above it, and issuing commands to the rank directly below it. Now there are precisely 300 million Modrons in existence in the universe, and that number is unchanging. If a Modron is destroyed, it disintegrates, and somewhere randomly a Modron of a rank beneath the one that was destroyed, in a flash of light, takes the shape of the next rank above. And that process continues all the way down to the lowly Monodrone at the bottom, who will suddenly appear in Mechanism and wander out of the cathedral to rejoin the, the rest of them. Now, monodrones are the lowest rank of modrons. They're so basic they can only do one thing at a time. They take orders from the duo drones that are the second rank in the chain, who can do two tasks at a time. The ranking structure is repeated for the tri drones, quad drones, and pentadrones, up all the ranks to Primus itself. Now, if you encounter any modrons during your travels, be aware that that's not an accident. They're there for a reason, possibly a mission. They're also not inherently violent, and they will attempt to resolve things non-violently as destruction completely goes against their nature of organization and order. However, if they are agitated or ordered into action, they will comply with zero pity and zero remorse. You see, Modrons are not individuals, they are collective, and all information gathered makes its way all the way up the hierarchy to Primus itself, which means it's virtually impossible to convince a Modron to go against something it's been tasked to do, even with the aid of magic. But what about our Modrons? 
There is a single monodrone and dual drone pair that are assigned to a factory on Mechanus, and their main role is to adjust all of the wall fixtures that are no longer level due to the continual vibrations of the factory. The dual drone inspects and points out the crooked pieces and orders the monodrone to straighten them. One day a large explosion rocked the courtyard outside their factory. The pair went outside to check it out and a large random portal to some random realm had opened up as sometimes happens in Mechanus. Before they could get closer to inspect it, a tri-drone had come by and investigated and detected that some creature of chaos had snuck into their realm and must be destroyed. It ordered the dual drone to track down and destroy this beast while it would go and get reinforcements. As the two marched around the perimeter of the factory, the monodrone suddenly stopped in its tracks and started beeping, fire, 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 fire. Sure enough, there was a fire raging inside the building. The two modrons, bound by duty, charged into the facility. Large triangular flames of the exact size growing from the floor to the ceiling glowing from orange to yellow in a rhythmic trance-like pattern were burning the combustible fluids and fabrics inside. The pair engaged the fire suppression system which quickly put out the blaze. Investigation ruled that the chaos beast must have gotten inside a conduit somehow and its mere presence had started the fire. One hour, 55 minutes, and 50 seconds, the precise amount of time it took the tri-drone and the dispatch unit to walk from the barracks to the factory and then back. The Modron unit could not find any sign of the Chaos Beast, so they departed, advising the Dual Drone and Monodrone to report on any other suspicious activity in the factory that they saw. 3.14 cycles afterwards, some worker constructs collapsed and went offline. The Monodrone and Dual Drone pair reported the news, and when the repair team arrived, they concluded that the cause of the crash in the employees was due to a biological contamination of their organic parts, resulting in failure of the flesh to provide the sustenance required by their mechanical components. They were diseased. The pair did a thorough sweep of the facility until the Monodrone stopped and started shouting, Poop! 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 Sure enough, there was evidence of feces and urine waste inside a housing unit that contained exactly 10 days, 8 hours worth of rations for the workers, enough for 31 shifts. Five cycles later, and on lap 2940 of their routine straightening patrol, the monodrone again alarmed, destruction, destruction, destruction. Sure enough, the duo drone had noticed something had been attempting to destroy a wooden structural beam. By tooth and claw, they were clearly intending on bringing down the whole factory. It was clear to the pair now that the Chaos Beast had not in fact left their factory. They had signaled for support and had been waiting for 23 minutes and 14 seconds when a power conduit on a nearby wall began sparking electricity causing the main power auger of the factory to shudder and shake which in turn caused the whole factory to lurch under the rhythmic vibrations that were building and building. Unaware of how he knew this, the duo drone just knew there was an 83.5% chance that with that weakened structure beam, if they did not stop it, the entire building would come collapsing down. The duo drone ordered the monodrone to fly into the compartment to short it out completely. The monodrone dutifully complied, closed its one eye and winced as the electricity racked through its body. The circuit had been blown and power to the factory had ceased. Winner? The weakened monodrone asked. But there in that silence, the duo drone heard something he had never heard before. It was the sounds of the chaos beast. The pair grabbed their spears and loaded their combat protocols. They might only be two modrons, but they were also many. As they crept towards the noise, they spotted the creature sitting atop a large cog on the floor of bronze, surrounded by scrap and other recycled materials. It had brown fur covering its back and was using its large teeth to tear away at some material, possibly attempting to make a nest for some of its chaos spawn. Monodrone A634E440 and Duodrone 7A7AE8A1 had successfully killed the Chaos Beast Invader that day. A large brown rat from Mary Wynette's kitchen in Suzale. The Modrons had restored order.
This is why I don't usually film during the daytime. 